and we're back and um, again I'm using the chambermaid here I got some Hoppies 9 solvent on here we're just gonna shove this into the chamber here okay we're gonna just shove it all the way in as far as it'll go and uh, you're just gonna twist on this handle here and we're gonna do a little scrubbing action on the chamber okay um, just try to get in there and and get it at some different angles that's the one really nice thing about this flexible cable is um, you know you can just keep twisting on this handle and it just keeps on scrubbing and uh, this is kind of the routine that I like to do just give it a few scrubs now again if you're using a uh, very harsh solvent you're gonna, as soon as the stuff starts coming out of the chamber right as soon as you get the um, the solvent coming out you really want to wipe it up before it has a chance to uh, damage your bedding or before it has a chance to um, get onto the to your fiberglass stock or whatever might be finished the, the, the nice finish of your rifle before it damages anything you want to go ahead and wipe up the excess okay but again since I used a gentler solvent I'm not too worried about it right now what I'm going to show you also is how to use the GI chamber brush if you have this tool it will work and um, it's kind of a cheaply made thing but they did that for a reason they did that for the, for the purpose that once it falls apart you have to get a new one and so you don't keep using the same chamber brush over and over and what you want to do is get a, a section of a cleaning rod okay this was made to be used with a M14 GI cleaning rod and it's got some holes in there and you just go ahead and thread a handle into the hole and you shove your chamber brush into the chamber and it's a, it's a ratcheting action so you just twist on it okay I like to put my finger in there and just kind of wrench on it and this is again this is where the chambermaid really has an advantage over the GI chamber brush because if you have a scope on top and you don't want to remove your scope you can't really use the chamber brush very easily it gives you a, a much more limited limited range of motion you're only limited to just a little bit of action as where with the chambermaid you know and sometimes it's a little tricky getting it out and sometimes once this gets old that rivet fails so as you're pulling it out the rest of the chamber brush gets stuck in there and you gotta punch it out with a cleaning rod again this is where the chambermaid say if you have a scope here right that's that's limiting your access point you can just shove that chambermaid right on in and scrub away and you're good to go okay and again I went ahead and got that all nice and um, and dirty there with some solvent so I'm gonna clean up the excess and this is the time when you really want to use a um, cleaning port okay this is a I think this was a possum hollow cleaning port I think some Claire makes some as well and it's got an o-ring there and it seals the chamber okay so when you shove this in there any solvent that's stuck in your barrel it's going to be contained by this o-ring okay so we're gonna shove that in there and then you're gonna release uh, the operating rod okay the bolt stop you're just gonna push back a little bit and let the bolt rest on the, uh, the cleaning port okay so sometimes when you hear people say oh you have to clean the rifle upside down this is what they're talking about okay so at this point this is when you want to invert the rifle okay because now you have um, now you have cleaning solvent in the chain in the, in the bore and what can happen is it can it can drift up into your gas cylinder if you have it this way the solvent can drift down into your gas cylinder and get contained in here and you can't get it out unless you disassemble the gas cylinder so at this point you want to turn the rifle upside down okay now we're upside down um, gravity is going to be our friend it's going to keep solvents from getting in your gas cylinder okay so now that we've turned it upside down now it's time to clean out the flash suppressor and you know if you don't want to get your bench too wet or too dirty go ahead and put something underneath to catch all the solvents this is where I like to use something like a nine millimeter uh, brush okay and uh, again you can just use the same chambermaid or you can use any old cleaning handle okay and we'll just uh, thread this on here throw on some solvent real quick all right and just go ahead and now if you have a, a ream flash suppressor you can use a little bit bigger of a chamber brush um, but for one that's not reamed that's just a, a standard flash suppressor I would recommend using like a nine millimeter brush okay so again you want to shove this in here 
and just kind of work it back and forth. And what you're trying to do is you're trying to clean the the crown, the or the muzzle, if you will. Um, just give it a few good scrubs and just leave it as is. Okay. And we'll set that aside. Um, now it's time to use your cleaning rod. And what I have here is a couple of different uh, styles of cleaning rods here. The first one up here is a, this one's a, a Tipton cleaning rod. This is a, a carbon fiber rod, um, a one piece. Both of these are one piece. This is just a really cheap clean bore cleaning rod. Um, it's got a, uh, this one's steel and it's coated. And um, again, it's all one piece. Um, you can find this one just about anywhere. Uh, it's real cheap. The Tipton's a little more expensive. Okay, and again, it's carbon fiber, but it's also a, a thicker diameter. Okay. And this is what I generally type, like to use on my rifle. Either one will work just fine. You just have to know what to do. Now, if you're going to use the uh, if you're going to use the clean bore cleaning rod, um, because of its smaller diameter, you can actually use a uh, just a 12 gauge shotgun shell as a bore guide. Okay, um, the center of that hole. If you if, the, if you punch out the primer, if you punch out the primer. The hole for the primer is uh, the hole for the primer is just the right size for a cleaning rod, okay. And believe it or not, it actually slips right over um, the flash suppressor perfectly, and it works as a board guide very very well, okay. Now, if you're going to use the Tipton or a Dewey cleaning rod, it has a a much bigger uh, diameter has a much bigger uh, diameter so you're going to need something like like a Dewey cleaning rod guide okay now what I've noticed about the cleaning rod guide is that uh, on the the ends ends of the flat of the uh, the guide the bronze insert uh, mine has some sharp edges and so what I did is I just use a chamfer and deburring tool um, let me grab it for a second here I just used a, a chamfer and deburring tool and I just kind of deburred the the opening on both sides, and what that'll do is just um, what that'll do is is that'll keep uh, that'll keep your cleaning rod from getting gouged up, or it'll keep it from scratching the coating off of it. Okay, so we'll go ahead and get started with uh, with punching the bore. Okay, before we get started punching the bore, I wanted to show you one more thing. Um, something a lot of people may like to do if they don't want to turn the rifle upside down is they like to shut off the gas valve. Okay, and to shut off the gas valve, what you're doing is you're cutting off the gas system. From the barrel, so the gas and fluid can't pass from the barrel to the gas cylinder. Okay, now this only works on gas cylinders that have been unitized either by welding or a gas cylinder that's not unitized at all, or um, it, as long as it hasn't been what they call screwed and glued. Okay, and what screw and glue is um, to unitize the gas cylinder is to basically you're you're mating these two the the gas cylinder and the front band together. Okay, You want to make them one solid unit. That really does help out accuracy. One of the methods to do that is by screwing, you drill some holes okay, in the front band and some matching holes in the gas cylinder and you mate the two together, you thread it and then you drive some, or I'm sorry, yeah, you drill right through the, uh, the spindle valve. Okay, You drill a hole through the front band, the gas cylinder, and the spindle valve and then you thread that hole and then they put screws in there and thereby um, permanently um, securing these two pieces but in, the, in that time what they've done is you've basically locked your gas valve open and you can never shut it again unless you take the screws out and that's not something you really want to do this is one I had to kind of sit around as a project I decided I didn't want to unitize it anymore so I took it apart this one here is unitized by welding and so I have welding points on the top and the bottom and uh, a really really good clean job and what that does is it uh, it allows you to shut your gas system off if you want to go single shot or if you want to clean it and you want to shut it off so you just push in on the spindle valve rotate it okay so this is open so the, the slot up and down is open and the slot horizontal is closed so this is closed so now your gas cylinder is isolated from the barrel. Okay, so we'll get started punching the bore.
Now what I like to do, I like to use I like to use a patch and a jag, okay? Um, it's a brass jag. Now, because the jag is basically caliber specific, it fits so tight in the barrel, if you use a 30 caliber patch with a jag, it's going to be so tight you're going to get stuck in there and you're going to bend your rod or something and it's going to take a lot of effort to get it back out. So what I do is I actually, what I found out works perfectly are these um, uh, 22 caliber GI cleaning patches or cotton cleaning patches um, that are made for to, to be used with an eyelet and a 223 bore. Okay, so with the brass jag, I find out that it's the perfect fit. Now, if you don't have any of these, you can either, you know, uh, get one of these and either cut it into quarters. You can get one of these patches and you can basically cut a big patch into quarters and make a bunch of these smaller patches, right? Um, just grab some scissors, even cutting in half, it's a little bit of a waste, but it works just fine, okay? But a full patch is going to be way too much to use with a brass jag, okay? So I'm going to use um, I'm going to use this carbon fiber rod from Tipton, and I'm going to go ahead and thread my jag on there. Now what I'm doing, um, I like to just get the initial junk out of the barrel first before I scrub it. So I'm just going to get um, get a patch and stick it on the end of the jag, okay and get it a little wet here. All right. Now, I'm going to go make a mess on my bench again. Anyway, so what you want to do to properly do this, you want to start the jag into the barrel till it just uh, just goes into the muzzle. And actually, I messed up a little bit. Before you do that, you want to grab your your cleaning rod, um, your cleaning rod guide and slide it over your rod. Now you get your jag and you thread it on there and you put the uh, put the cleaning patch in there and you slide it into the barrel just till it barely touches just till it barely goes into the bore and then you want to slide your bore guide on okay and you gently want to push through until um, You want to barely, gently push until you feel it stop. Okay. Now, what's going on? So once you push it through, it should just go ahead and, and come right out. Now, unfortunately, I did this whole video and I didn't realize that I didn't restart my camcorder. So this rifle's already clean, but I'm still going to go through the motions for you. Okay. So there you have it. That's how you you run the a, a uh, just an initial cleaning patch through your bore. Now we're going to go ahead and punch the bore.